right, let's take a look at GCOA5. The last objective was all about definitions and rules. This one is all about doing the actual transformations. So it says, given a geometric figure, uh, a rotation, a reflection, or a translation, draw the transformed figure using graph paper, patty paper, tracing paper, software. Specify a sequence of transformations that will carry a given figure on to another. Huge objective. We're talking about uh, something that could take you maybe two to three weeks to accomplish. So not one objective one day, nowhere near that. So in here we want you to learn how to actually do the reflections and the rotations and actually perform them, maybe construct them. Um, we want to do a number of them in a row. So the idea is if we do many, uh, a reflection, then a translation, a rotation, and then a reflection, to look at what happens to these things when that happens. This, of course, is leading to the huge idea of congruence, that soon we will define congruence as the mapping of one figure onto another using a single or sequence of isometric transformations. In other words, if I can take my shape and map it on yours, we are congruent. Double reflection over parallel lines, double reflection over intersecting lines, and then coordinate rules. Huge things in here, not very easy either, things that take some time. So the connections, of course, are to congruence. That's really what it comes down to, that we're setting the, the basis of, of congruence right here. What are the traps and the pitfalls? Well, one is uh, lots of students reflect easily when our horizontal, whoop, that's vertical or horizontal lines are used. If we ask a student to reflect over a line like this, too often I see this as my answer and they are missing uh, the idea of what it means to reflect over that perpendicular bisector that there would be a point here and a point here and a point here and that this, of course, should be the answer that we're looking at. Another uh, typical uh, issue is while students um, succeed easily with reflections, they struggle with rotations. And so even the idea of rotating a shape like this uh, 90 degrees um, for many can be a difficult thing. The key, of course, is the magical patty paper. If you don't know what this stuff is, you need to get it for your students. It makes things so much easier to place it uh, on top of the shape, uh, create, let me show you the idea is that you would trace it and then simply rotate it. Uh, it makes all of the difference, makes things, hard things easy, quickly. Um, the other thing, of course, I would say is that counterclockwise is a positive rotation and clockwise is negative. No one likes this. So I always spend time to talk about the initial arm and the terminal arm and that this is kind of where we get the convention of counterclockwise being our, our direction. Finally, last uh, trick uh, and trap is they do well double reflecting over parallel lines like this. They do well double reflecting here. They don't do so well when the lines are at some other angle. The other last thing is that the order that they reflect on matters to the direction. Lots of little things here. Slow down, hit it hard. This is the essence of congruence.